Hello, Jess Too Good here, and today we're taking a look at the LEGO Chinese New Year Temple Fair set, which has 1,664 pieces, 14 minifigures if you count the baby figure, and it retails for $120 in the United States, where it's exclusive to LEGO stores. So to anyone who hasn't seen this channel before, hey, I'm in love with this set. We've been dating for a while, and she's really nice, but she's going to allow me to review herself, and I'm going to be honest, and hopefully I don't hurt your feelings. So the first minifigure we'll take a look at is this one, which is the one I was looking forward to the most because I love that hair hat combo. It is the new piece from Lego Hidden Side for Parker, but with some new colors with uh, Sam Blue and Orange. We haven't seen that piece combination before and it looks fantastic. Base print is fairly new as the torso print, I think was from what, Lego Ninjago movie. And you can see an alternate facial expression at the back here where she looks really happy. Next figure is a vendor and he has that exclusive torso design which does have some Chinese lettering on there. That's pretty interesting. I also like the color combination there with the orangish yellow and red. This figure also has a really interesting new torso printing but I also love the use of the Emmett hair in black because we've only ever gotten that what in the Flintstone set before. There's no back facial printing but some cool back torso printing. This figure uses a kind of uncommon torso print that was introduced in last year's Hidden Side train set, but that's becoming a little bit more common. Also, this bottle right here is for our next figure, but we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Back torso printing and an alternate facial expression has more, which is still a confident smirk. Of course, that next figure is the baby, and this is a design from the Winter Village Fire Station that came out a few years back, so it's kind of cool to get a rare baby design here. It would have been nice to get an exclusive one because we don't have too many outfits for babies. You can see how he fits into the stroller and it just kind of attaches to a pretty interesting studs not on top build of a stroller. I do like how they're getting better and better with these stroller builds as babies become more prominent in the world of Lego. And it's cool seeing some different versions like this one. This next minifigure has a fairly new torso and face print, but nothing really super interesting with his design. No alternate facial expression as well. This figure uses the barf face, which of course has that alternate expression at the back. You can see right there. This torso print that's pretty common in Lego City nowadays. And he does have a little food build from one of the stalls, but we'll get to that when we take a look at the builds. This figure uses a lot of common pieces. I mean, the torso print, the bob haircut, and a very standard face print. So it's not really one of the more interesting ones of the set. And the last five minifigures are all continuity figures that are references to the Chinese New Year dinner set that came out last year, one of my favorite sets of 2019. The first figure is the grandfather from that family, and he has a really nice exclusive torso and leg printing. Also, I like this little element with the dragon head that comes in a few Ninjago sets, as well as this little figure stand or reward or whatever. His face print does not have an alternate expression. I thought it did for a second there. There's the grandmother as well, which I thought the torso and legs came in the Ninjago movie sets for some of the civilians, but the part code on brick set says it's a new piece, so I'm not entirely sure there. Dual side face print, where she has an alternate expression at the back, which is just slightly different from the one at the front, and then you got some back torso printing. The mom is back as well, with a face and torso print that isn't super exclusive or anything like that, but I do like this little purse that she has as an accessory. No back facial printing, but some back torso printing. As for the dad of the family, really nice inclusion with the scarf here because getting the scarf in red is only in this set and then the other Chinese New Year set for this January. And this design does use the face print from that last Chinese New Year set. He also seems to have a little food or accessory. You can see some back torso printing as well as an alternate facial expression right here where he looks pretty darn happy without his glasses. And I like his torso design underneath the scarf which you can see looks pretty neat there. There's the little girl, and she has that really nice hair piece in black. That's just something that only comes with this figure. Also a new printing for the envelope here on that one by two. It's slightly different from the one last year. Also another red scarf, which is really nice. A new-ish torso, or at this point, I guess I was introducing what fun at the park, so it's becoming kind of old. You get a better look at it with the scarf removed, and then her alternate facial expression has a pretty chipper look. Finally, there's the little boy of the family, which uses that same envelope print on the one by two, which is really nice. Common torso, face print, and this hat right here is actually pretty nice to get in red, which doesn't feature or wasn't featured in many sets outside the Arctic line of Lego City. And you can take a look at his back facial expression, his alternate facial expression, where he looks pretty worried. And then you got some back torso printing as well. So the set has quite a bit of builds, but let's take a look at the temple first. 
or the temple build, this is the most beautiful part of her, and I love this design. Though, I am going to say, looks are appealing. She doesn't have much depth. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of hoping for an interior here. But either way, let's take a closer look. We'll start at the front. And my girl has a really nice bush build at the front. And they use this four times, and they just attach to these two by two jumpers. This build actually uses quite a few of these three point leaf pieces, and it uses one of those six point flower base pieces. Pretty intricate to build those and quite annoying, but once you get them all done, it actually looks pretty beautiful from the front there. Oh, come on, stick on. Other than that, really nice piece usage with some of the parts that were printed and tiles printed from the Lego Lion Dance Chinese New Year set, where you got the one by four and also the one by two. It's quite a few times in this set. And at the top for that roof design, I love the use of these newer round one by one pieces. I still need to get a good name for them in orange, which only appear in this set and then the Lion Dance set in that coloring. Also love the printed tiles in this set where we have two right here. Those are two different ones exclusive to this set. And then all the way at the top. I like the further use of these dragon handle pieces, which are integrated pretty well into the roof design here. Oh, and three more things I wanted to point out was I love the red lanterns here, which were also present in the lion dance set, which is just the pumpkin piece in red. I like how these gates or I guess fences are built using different pieces from the gold bar piece to some of these modified one by ones. Then I really like how they use these basket pieces or container pieces or crate pieces to build up the wall there. I just don't usually see that as part of structure, so it's kind of cool to see. Honestly, looking from the back now, it does suck that there's no interior, though there are these little studs here maybe calling for an expansion. But I think at the end of the day, they're not going to do one. I think temples are very sacred in China, so to do an interior might be disrespectful, and that's probably why they omitted it here. Plus, it keeps the price down. Moving on to the set's other builds, the first set of stalls I'll take a look at is the toy stall and the food stall. So the toy vendor has some really cute little builds for paper windmills, and that uses an exclusive one-by-one -one circular tile print on this nice little paddle piece. And that's a cute little design, and you get quite a bit in this set with that exclusive printed tile. Some balloons to the left here and also to the right, where we get some more toys. Love this small little build for a propeller plane. You can see how that is built. We have some pieces that uh, came out last year with the propeller at the front, also the boomerang piece at the back, which is kind of interesting, and the Overwatch gun in the middle. Very nice part usage. That's kind of hard to put on the vendor stand there, but you also get a rat, a bunny, which bunnies are kind of uncommon, so that's good, or a rabbit, and then this panda plush, which is very reminiscent of the one from the Lego Movie 1 CMF series. We also have a duck, and if you look inside, there's actually some more toys which include a unicorn box right there. That's a one by one print from Lego Dots. It was also in a Lego architecture set last summer where I got a whole bunch from Bricks and Pieces and this one by one print of a little calculator or something like that. There's some more great exclusive prints with these one by three tiles used on this build. Also like the one by one pieces in red up top. And these two stalls are connected via this light line here. And there's some great lantern pieces once again and this printed two by three tile exclusive to the set. Go to the other stall and you'll get some food. And that food stall has some really cool pieces from the two by twos with that exclusive print there to the Porg slash BB-8 head piece with an exclusive print that looks straight up adorable. Also this poultry at the back, uh, these one by one printed circular tiles, which it's nice to get the waffle one outside the Stranger Things set. Also like how they built up the top roof here and how they built up this part back here. A little area for a meat cleaver to maybe chop up some meat or whatever, and also this bucket. And you can see how this little grill is operated with this one by one print, a switch, and more of those kebab looking foods. But let me know in the comments if you know what specifically those foods are based off of. And the next set of stalls include a shadow theater and this antique or collectible store. And the shadow theater is actually not a new concept for Lego. We got one in the Temple of Air Jitsu, but my gosh, is this a gorgeous idea that we don't see too often. Love that printed exclusive design for the panel there. And there's some nice exclusive one by three tiles. Also like this gold pizza slice piece, as I call it. Those two by twos appear once again from the other stall, and you get quite a few on this set here with three of them to the left there. Also some fireworks to the right, very simple build, same one they use in the lion dance. 
And if you go to the inside of the Shadow Stole or Shadow Theater, it's actually really cute because they have a small build to show how they made that. <laughs> With a statuette figure and then one of those dragon handles once again. As with all these stalls, I like how they keep each of these roof builds different. This time they use some inverted 2x2s two that are supposed to receive Technic pins. And then if you follow that string of lights and lanterns and once again that 2x3 appearing with the print, there's the last stall right here. As I said, more of those 2x2 two two tile prints which are pretty nice. And then there's just a bunch of these statuette figures i mean oh my gosh some of these have never appeared in these colors before whether it be orange or the pink one here and you do even get extras of each of them and that just works really well because i love collecting those little statuette figures the dark red and, and dark blue ones i don't think are new but are pretty hard to find i don't know if we've gotten green before we've definitely gotten the gold before but all that is super nice and then to the right here, there's some vases and some other fine china pottery, I guess you could say. And inside, there's actually a little bit of a design going on where they use this nice feather piece in a yellowish orange, which I think is exclusive to the set in that coloring. You also got another one of those one by one prints of the calculator and another little pot over there. Finally, there's builds for two cherry blossom trees, which are very similar, but not the exact same in their builds. They use a lot of the same pieces. There's just some inversion and some different positions and stuff, but nothing too special. I do love these builds though, and how they look, because these look fantastic. Those banners there are a really nice print. You get the two by three tile print once again, which appears throughout the set. Also the red lantern once again. I like the use of these white branch pieces and how the branches are connected where they use some clipped pieces. So you can actually get them in different positionings if you'd like to just change it up between the two, which I like, but they probably look the best just facing straight up like that. Either way, that is it for the builds of this set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. As for the box, the front shows the set and this is a pretty darn big box. I think it's just a $100 box size. And the back of the box illustrates some pretty cute scenes found with the set. There are a total of three instruction booklets in the set, and the smaller one actually has an ad for the Ninjago Legacy 2020 wave. <laughs> you know when it's hard to talk about something you love? Well, <laughs> that's how I feel about the Chinese New Year temple. She has such a vibrant personality compared to a lot of other temples I see. Whether it be a Ninjago one, I heard Minions is getting one. It doesn't feel lived in, it doesn't feel real. This set feels so real. It feels so grounded. And to get this from Lego, it's such an unconventional culture to see, even when we do get so many temples. And to get such a unique and just well thought out build, I really love that. And the temple's not the only great part because all the stalls each bring out a unique flavor and unique designs. And there's a whole bunch of pieces if you don't even care about the builds, whether it be some cool minifigure pieces, some new part recolors, or some exclusive prints. And at the end of the day, for $120, you get 1,600 plus pieces. You get 14 minifigures and all these detailed builds that are not on the level of any of the other LEGO themes or most other LEGO themes. I just can't recommend her enough. I love her so much. The only thing I have to say, baby, don't give me that look. Don't give me that look. I wish you had more of an interior. I wish there was something for the interior of the temple because the outside is just so gorgeous. I, I, can you blame me for wanting more? But at the end of the day, the value of this set is already exceeding that $120 price. It's not a big deal. And I think it might be a cultural issue where they don't want to show the insides of these temples or whatever, maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's just speculation. So I would still rate this set an A. It's just not an A+. Plus. I love you. Sorry I have to put a rating to you, but you're still phenomenal. It's better to be honest, right? Don't be angry at me. Okay. Sorry, guys. I don't know. She's, she might be a little bit angry or something like that, but I'll, I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.